I had never actually heard of the Grateful Dead. I heard about this bazaar in the old Thrift Co. parking lot across from the lacrosse arena. I was curious. I was just a kid in my early 30s working at the health food store behind what used to be that um, shoe place. My boss at the time, who everyone called Ding, he insisted I go set up on a tarp and see if I could unload some of our overstock, mostly yeast. His ordering back then was effed like a sticky trapper keeper with a scrawl of four different malnourished part-timers. They're baked and vegan. They wrote just like amaranth bucket and moved on. Anyway, we had all this yeast mostly, plus these noogie balls that Ding was trying to get going as a side thing. He said I could borrow his Jeep for the whole week if I do the swap meet thing. It was a dumb idea. Ding didn't know the scene and I wasn't thinking about anything except dune buggying in those days. I had not yet discovered my passion for small-scale health food store middle management. <sighs> so I'm hunched there, legs crisscross getting scorched, no clients, horrible music filling the air, and my buddy Peanut Butter walks up with this classic Cambria Wanderer, who I swear was wearing flip-flops fashioned out of squished-down water bottles and jute rope. I was like half dozing, probably had sun stroked, and peanut butter kneed me in the shoulder to wake me up. This is Lee from up by Abalone Cove. He's got a question about beans. This was the first time I saw Lee. He mumbled some convoluted idea about trying to source wholesale black beans for this hacky sack business who's trying to get going. Baggots, beans in bags or something. In hindsight, it was actually a pretty tight idea. Hacking was just getting going back then, and people were just making their own sacks out of rock-filled food packaging. Leather and beans was a stroke of genius. Unfortunately, we were idiots. It's funny now to consider what might have been if we'd grabbed that train. Maybe we're better off. Money poisons the soul. Or so I hear. Flash forward 22 years, I'm passing through slow on my way back from delivering a catamaran to my wife at the time's nephew from previous marriage. Anyway, I distinctly remember seeing the fucked up flip-flops first, near the corner of Toro and Marsh Gone by Linnaeus. It was definitely Baggett. He was running, full bore, laughing maniacally, with 32-ounce smoothie in each hand. Just long hair, demonic, chasing no one, just laughing and screaming. I pulled over my rig carefully. To this day, I'm proud to say I've never lost a load. And I uh, got in his way, I flagged him down. It was like the decades hadn't even passed. We were immediately back in the studio, quote unquote, reminiscing about those first sessions, the magic we'd captured. It was the teepee on the back part of Craig's property. It was perfectly mildewed. The nights were hot enough to sleep out nude. The extension cord was just long enough to provide the juice to run the TAC. Lee was tuned in to something beyond gold. Dune buggying was the farthest thing from my mind when we dropped into There Goes My Toast. Mm. I seem to remember it was a 48 day session. Time stood still. The power was actually shut off by the county for a big part of that time. As Craig's parents got wrapped up in that whole Romtha cartel ordeal. When the dust settled and I was back in Carpinteria, I woke up with a sunburn, half a phone number, and an IOU, and Ding was immediately like, back to reality. Wash out the bulk honey barrel. It smells like mushrooms. Oof. So apparently, yeah, the tapes had gotten out and made the rounds. They lost their labels, you know the story. Some dip in Burbank ended up releasing a vinyl, uh, a bootleg, yeah, an unlicensed thing on a short-lived religious label, and then some Goodwill trippers had kept their copies of that, and then the internet comes barreling down. Next thing we know, old Weird Lee is newly YouTube, uncut gem. Hence those two smoothies, and the running, and the hair. He was so happy just to be online. No, I don't play bass anymore. Lost my taste for it after that whole Lane Staley thing. As far as I can tell though, Lee's been going strong in his own corner of the universe, mostly orbiting around the coin-op showers in the marina up by Morrow. 
Me, I'm the interim manager at the store now, mostly doing specialty yogurts. Lost touch with all the other guys from that time. I heard Ding's noogies got huge, though, before Enron, and I gather the Grateful Dead is broken up. My son's shithead friend won't stop coming over, and our garage smells like raccoon piss. Anyway, what was the question? <laughs>